Welcome to uh, Cola Stories on the Road. You know I had this uh, chip on my, not my shoulder, on my windshield. Here's what happened to Gulf Liner now. I have a cracked windshield. Thanks to all the loose gravel that's on this highway. That if loose gravel was on the street, it'll break somebody's windshield. And uh, well, it did break mine. I got two cracks now. This one and uh, this one, which is already growing. To so see if I can uh, buy that windshield repair thing so that it doesn't increase the cracks. Lucky for me, I stopped at this store and uh, hoped that there was a windshield repair kit. And just for my luck, there was just one left. However, I need two. This is the bigger of the two cracks, this one and up here. I hope this doesn't grow too much by the time I get to uh, to a white horse I should be taking care of that but this is a much bigger crack because it's already starting to to grow out if you can see uh, it's already creating some hairs hairlines I'm trying to fix uh, this one here following the instructions now I have to put this resin into this hole here I've done it once before in 2019 when Globelander's uh, crack happened on this well in the same region actually uh, going to Alaska this place is famous. They say if you don't get a wind chip, a windshield chip in your windshield, that means you haven't been to the Yukon yet. Well, thanks to all the gravel on the road and the high speeds, it actually happens from oncoming traffic. Not from the one in front of you, but oncoming traffic. Exactly what happened with me. And now I have to take, I have to take this syringe, uh, plunge it in here, and create a vacuum, and pull up so that there's a vacuum pressure created inside of it. And uh, I'm here in Whitehorse, all west glass. And this kind gentleman. Sir, what's your name? Robbie. Robert. Yeah. Robert is going to do what he knows best on trying to fix the, or arrest the uh, cracks from getting larger and larger. So we're going to show you how he does it. We're going to drill at the end of the, the, the crack line. Okay and that should prevent it from expanding further. And then we'll drill a, a second hole about an inch in from the crack uh, to fill that area. So it shouldn't... So when something like this happens on the road, do you recommend that we make another hole right on top right away? Well, so if you're in the field, you won't be doing that you unless be. you have the proper tools. But what you could do is put like a two inch clear packaging tape and that would save you for the short term. Like oh, if, really? If I wish really I'd known stuck. that. I do have all of that inside. Right. Oh, well, and, so and I... And that's, that's a good emergency measure. It keeps the water out. Okay. Um, but, you know, when filling these cracks, it's not a sure thing. It, sometimes it'll bounce around. Uh-huh. But in this case, I think we'll stop it for good. Oh, great. Save I'm glad water. I came here soon enough. So this crack has grown about two inches since it happened. Uh, sometimes it will spider off really quick. Yeah. Other times it can stay there for months. But you're going on rough terrain, so it, it's a good idea to fix well, it early. Thank you, Robert. We don't usually drill twice, we usually only drill at the end, mm -hmm. uh, but this gives you the added benefit of ensuring that resin fills that end point. So how good are these repair kits that you get along the way? 
Um, they're really superficial because you need a certain amount of pressure to force the resin in between the layers. Uh -huh. You could use like a regular drill with a small drill bit and that would work. Uh, but you have to be really careful not to drill right through. See the end point that the line fills in a bit. So you're adding pressure by screwing that in? Right. But it's just the uh, So this is filling in? The, so, yeah, yeah, I can see that's vanished, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's just a matter of touch to be able to know how much pressure to use. Mm -hmm. If you use too that, much, it's... That's what makes you the expert, right? <laughs> Just putting some pressure on the inside to open up, open up the space. crack. going inside there. And so what I'll do is just put resin on top because it's quite a large impact. And just fill it this way. Yeah, even by putting resin in there, I'm not sure how good I did it. But... Yeah, I think you, uh, I think you, it definitely helped. What, is, what are these two red things you did put in here? Uh, so the resin reacts to ultraviolet light. Okay. And it acts as a hardener. And uh, after three minutes, it should be fully hardened. Okay. And or in the field, you just make sure it's pointing to the sun side and let the yeah, sun do its ten, job for 20 right. minutes. 10 minutes in the sun will be hard as well. But if you're doing this outdoors, you want to make sure it's covered while you're applying the resin. In the shade. Right. right. Because it will harden as you're applying the resin. Okay. So this young man, Aftar, Punjab se ho? Kitre? Sangroor se. Sangroor se? So he got me started over here. Kab se aayo yaha pe? Two years. Those are work permit. I see. Work permit. Work permit. And once these ultraviolet ray machines uh, dry out the resin, and you know, once it's been taken out, and this one is going to take a little longer because it's a lot deeper. That's what the ultraviolet rays look like in that machine. And what we did from the inside, since this crack was also penetrating the inside, we filled it with resin and put a clear plastic tape on it, or rather clear plastic sheet, which sticks to the resin. The plan is to leave it in there and uh, maybe put some clear tape over it. leave this extra resin on the surface. Give it a little more strength. Strength. Yeah. Yeah, good idea. It, it won't interfere with your wipers or your vision. There you go. So you, you still see the line, but there is resin in there. Yeah, it's, I can see the difference. Yeah. And that so that, those two holes are now filled up with that resin, right? Or right. Exactly. You can, yeah, it's, you can barely feel it. 
Yeah, they can feel this one actually. Still. Right. Yeah, you will because this plastic has more resin. So what I asked Robert to do is just to be on the safe side, the two holes that he drilled, uh, it sort of felt like it wasn't fully filled like this one. Now you this one feels like there was no break at all. It was like smooth. While this one felt a little in my, with my nail, I could feel a little jagged edge. So I asked him to put more resin in there and cover it with this plastic cap. And I'll leave it in there for some time till the sun can cure it. And the same thing over here, we've pretty much uh, left the cap on and on the other side as well. So overall, I think it was a successful attempt at trying to arrest the, uh, the spread of the crack on the windshield. Uh, and at some point we shall claim uh, insurance to see if I need to replace the windshield. But right now, while on the mission, uh, it may be impossible to have the windshield shipped from the UK since it's not standard vehicle over here. Mission continues, stay with us. Now that we have the glass fixed, uh, the windshield fixed at least, not to become worse, I have to go and get to see if I can fix my water heater. And uh, I came to this place called Fraser RV, they don't have time and the uh, actual new water heater, if I have to pick one, is like a thousand dollars. Now that's thousand dollars less in this gas tank. So I'm gonna go and see if I can fix what I have in here and if someone here can fix it. They sent me to another one. So I'm going on a wild goose chase to an RV store to see who can fix it here in Whitehorse. On a recommendation of another RV dealership that didn't have time to take me in, they sent me to this one called Go North. Go North is a US RV company and this is the only Canadian franchise store or own store. They op own and operate this store in the Yukon in Whitehorse and I uh, came here to see if I can have my solar panels looked at and that young boy there looks quite the genius and knows what the heck he's doing. What's your name? Alex. Alex, uh, you've you've looked at a few things so what do you think uh, is your diagnosis of this truck now? Want it. <laughs> you want it? Okay, but <laughs> are things working the way they're supposed to? At yeah, least the, the ones that you part. looked at? Yeah, except your hot water heater is kind of busted. But, but the solar panel's fine? We'll check it out. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> okay. I found out through him that uh, the solar panel that is broken is actually generating power and it's not uh, defunct. So I don't need to buy another one. He's just going to try and fix what there is now and uh, see that it's working and all the batteries are charging because that is the difference between parking in a spot for three, four days and not having to run out of power and rely on the alternator that charges those batteries when the truck is in motion which is the primary reason of why you have solar is so you can park and camp for extended periods of time she was well made when she was and uh, over time a neglect uh, things were going wrong and I'm trying to get a handle on all those things uh, bit by bit so I can keep her in uh, full swing as they call it well we have a smiley face whatever that means Apparently that it's charging. Apparently, let's see. Right here. Okay. Yeah, I would say it's charging. Maybe not very fast. Normally, so we got 13.3. Mm -hmm. Charge voltage ideally should be around 14, 13, 6, somewhere in that area. Mm -hmm. But it is putting out a little bit of a charge. So... I can check your red arc box downstairs. See, it's going up slowly. Now, I don't know what size your panels are. They could just be smaller wattage. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Do you know how many watts are I on the no panel? I have no idea. Okay. 160, does that sound right? Uh, yeah, it could be. So, if it's 160, it's... Uh, the biggest panels you can get these days are 200 watts. Mm -hmm. So, 160 is not a bad panel size. And it is but it is old though. Yeah. Very old. Okay. And the the, the one panel has a tree branch stuck through it basically. <laughs> yeah. 
but it was still putting out 20 volts, which is normally what we expect to see, 20 to 28. Mm -hmm. So it might not be working at full efficiency anymore, but it's still doing a little bit. So the trickle charge is happening. Yeah, very likely. Your batteries are pretty full at 13 volts, so it's hard to say if it's charging, charging or not. Uh, a lot or not, but I'll get a different type of meter and we'll see what's coming in on the panel. In the meanwhile, if you're wondering why I have so much engine oil over here, well, she drinks a lot. For some reason, she drinks it all if we don't keep an eye. And uh, it goes from 10, 11 liters to zero. So uh, it's every 1,000, 1,200 miles. So I keep a uh, spare just in case it happens somewhere in the boondocks where I don't have access to get more oil. So this is one of the essential spares that I carry. While we wait for Alex to come back and get us a different meter to see if the uh, solar uh, charger is coming into the battery, this is a cassette for the uh, air breather, which is underneath the truck, somewhere there where I'm po pointing. and. Uh, at some point that cartridge needs to be changed and this is a new spare. Apparently we're charging with 5 amps, which is amazing considering I didn't see much going on upstairs. So 5 amps is it's a, a good thing. Oh, it's a good charge. It's it, You can have more of course, but 5 amps is nothing to sneeze over. It's very good. So if you didn't know, you can mm -hmm. push this button. It goes through a few settings. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Um, so we got... So I think that sunlight power coming in is 13.1. The battery is at 13.1 and the sun is putting in five amps. And the battery, I believe is what it's saying, is the battery is getting 4.8 from those five coming off the panel. And then nothing is coming off this one, which is so correct because there's nothing hooked up. And that's kiloamp hours for people who like that measurement. So you got a still good solar system here. Oh, nice. I'm yeah. Happy Golflander is parked in this parking lot and of course there's another one there and we're going to the Canadian Game Center this is run by the town of Whitehorse if you're ever wondering what kind of a life we lead on the road well it can be good bad and ugly um, this is good so the system here is we can pay eight dollars and fifty cents or say nine dollars and we can use this center all day, which means it has a gym, has a swimming pool, has a bathtub, uh, showers, you know, all of that. So for eight bucks a day, you get to use these facilities. So I'm actually going there to get a shower. Maybe I'll go to the gym. Maybe. So once we paid the fees, we're in this beautiful building that has a gym over there which is where well I'm hoping to use it just now of course we have a lot of Indian boys and girls young boys and girls who are here and uh, this of course is the wellness center and change rooms which is where I'm gonna leave my stuff so these are the locker rooms that I can keep my stuff and what I didn't bring with me is a lock to keep my things in here and uh, keep it secure for the whole day which I plan to. Those are the showers. So I'm going to go back to the truck and go bring my lock. There's a subway down here, so you know where I'm going to eat lunch. That's where I'm going to eat lunch. Well, if you ask the locals, you'll get a lot of inside tips. This is not something that most uh, overlanders who come from outside know. But thanks to my host, Ravi, who uh, gave me a little tour of the inside into his town and uh, I'm wiser now. So back to the truck it is. Back in home base, I've got to look into my laptop bag, which is usually where I'm prepared with all this little hardware. Maybe I have a lock in there, let's find out. In the airport, they ask you to take out all your electronics. So what I do is I put all my electronics in a bag like this. And so when I have to take it out, all I have to do is take this bag out so I don't have to keep looking for things and putting things back. It's just more convenient. So maybe there's a lock in here. Ta-da! A combination lock. Never ever used. And today, it's time to use it. 
and now I'm heading to the gym and do some, well, little training. I haven't been doing too much for my World Transplant Games, but I get a little lumbering, limbering going on over here. In this building, you also have a, a walking track. See, it's a jogging and walking track, and of course, you look into that's the field. What you have there are Red Cross beds. They're preparing for the community use. There's a lot of flooding that happens here. And in case there are some people who are displaced from their housing because of the floods, they've got an emergency use shelter over here. How cool is that? This is what you call being prepared. I just finished some gymming, stretching, back exercises. I had a little sandwich, a Subway sandwich, cheap and best. It's, it's eggs inside, so I got my proteins, I got my veggies. And now I'm just walking it off a little bit. So today's been a quite a relaxed day. I took the day off from anything else. Uh, got some work done on the RV. Uh, looked at it, got the glass and the, the windshield that I got chipped yesterday or today uh, fixed for the time being. And uh, here I am, it's two in the afternoon, walking it off, walking the lunch off, uh, shower and maybe a nice relaxed nap in Gulflander. I have a really comfortable bed, so I like that. <clears throat> so here, here's a day in my life, at least one of the days. One of my events for the World Transplant Games is, uh, well, of course, the ball throw, where I'm going to try my best to retain the gold. But the other event is called the 5,000 meter race walk. So uh, I'm going to be sort of limbering my legs in this walking path today, just to get used to the action and motion. I did my first full round of race walking and it really took a toll. I could feel the burn, you know where? And those are the muscles I need to activate. I'll show you. This is of course my leg and this muscle over here. That's the calf and it's this muscle here that began to start burning on both legs. Here and here. So I'm gonna feel the soreness tomorrow. And uh, I've got to look up what exercises while I sit in the truck to strengthen those muscles and keep activating them. All done and in my locker room. Guess which locker number I picked. That's right, that's the year I was born.